You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Well, Rob, the caffeine is finally kicking in, which is, which is good because I have been looking through so many audio clips, so many video clips. Got to start editing and uh, I'm running out of music. That's why videoblocks.com forward slash drone creator has given us a great opportunity to take advantage of the dual membership for a hundred bucks off because you get access to audioblocks.com and videoblocks.com for a hundred bucks off, which means for a very low amount of money, you get unlimited access to a huge database of copyright free music, copyright free audio. I already said that. Copyright free video and motion music graphics. and audio. You know, yeah, yeah. It could be you know, a little like a bing <laughs> or a beep, you know. Or an actual song. Yeah, who knows? Either way, check it out, videobox.com forward slash drone creator. And guys, thank you so much for being with us today. My name is Paul. And my name is Rob. And guys, this is episode 629. As always, we appreciate you hanging out with us. Hope you're having a great day. Thank you for the questions. And I uh, got a pretty detailed question today. It is a very detailed question. I just hope people would be detail-oriented enough to turn the air conditioner on in the studio. <laughs> it is getting a little toasty in here. It's always a little hot when you're around, Rob. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I hear that a lot, Paul. Let's listen to the question. Gentlemen, I have an airspace question. And let me preface this by saying I'm a longtime pilot with an airline transport pilot rating, so I'm not unfamiliar with airspace. I also just recently got my Part 107 ticket. My question is that I have a person who wants me to film a property 11 nautical miles west of Newark International Airport. I know I'm not allowed to fly in Class B airspace, and this property would be under the Class B airspace. I'm assuming I'm allowed to fly in that area, but I can't find any literature on that. My second question is about the Mode C veil. Now, A drone, to my understanding, is considered an aircraft, and since I'm within the Mode C veil and uh, I would be flying a Mavic Pro, it obviously does not have a transponder. So I have no idea, again, whether I'm violating the airspace by not having a transponder with my Mavic Pro. Hoping you can help me out with this, and I appreciate everything you do, and looking forward to hearing your answer. All righty. Thank you for the question. And don't forget, guys, if you have a question, go to askdroneu.com. Transponder. Maybe we should start with what that is. Uh, well, first of all, I just have to say thank you very much to you, sir, um, because this guy is saying, look, I've been in manned aviation for a very long time and I don't know this. And I think that's really cool. Yeah, it is. I um, love it. Because I, I, and I would love to see more of that. Um, and sir, thank you, really. Um, now, why do you not need a mode C transponder? Because... An unmanned aircraft. A drone is not an aircraft. It is a small unmanned aircraft system as defined by Part 107, otherwise known as SUAS or UAS. Thus, you do not need a Mode C transponder being 30 nautical miles out from specific airspace. Um, That being said, uh, since you are below the floor of that airspace and the controlled airspace is only let, let's just say the example is uh and i could probably pull up newark airport here on sky vector but uh, let's say the example is the, the floor is at 4500 feet and the ceilings at 10,000 feet if you're below the floor you're not in controlled airspace right. we, we have to remember that airspace is like an upside down wedding cake and the most controlled aspect of it is at the very center, and then we go up and out from there. But if you're below the tier of the wedding cake, it is 100% okay to fly. Just like in Sedona Airport, which is class um, it's class G, but it's right below class E. Class E mm-hmm. is at 700 feet, but below that, it's class G. And you're good to go there. Mm-hmm. And that's been a big point of contention and why I... It doesn't s- seem that... I mean, there's a lot of difficult concepts relating to airspace. That doesn't seem like one of them. No. And you know what? The reason that Sedona has become a point of contention is because they said, we've had a drone strike here at Sedona Airport and FISDO went out and there was no damage to the plane. They're like, how can you say this is a drone strike? Sedona Airport then put out the sign that says no drones allowed e- even under part 107. That was wasn't true. Scottsdale FISDO went out again and told him you can't do that. And then the news put it out that you can't fly drones at Sedona Airport. And then the FAA had to get involved and say, well, 
okay, <laughs> it's class G, so it's uncontrolled. But as an unmanned aircraft pilot, you are supposed to yield to, to man traffic. Of course. That also means that if there is not any planes out on that runway, you could taxi down the damn runway and go off off the backside of it and not have a problem. <laughs> so I know that there is someone... Who's going to do that this week? <laughs> Have fun. <laughs> so, <laughs> but remember, uh, yield, always yield to manned aircraft because we do not want to be a safety hazard to anyone who is risking their life by flying. And you have to remember that if anyone is in an airplane, they are risking their life by flying. So you should never get in the way of them. And imagine if it was you sitting in that airplane. Would you want to oh, yeah. see a drone coming up next to your window? Right. Probably not. Absolutely. But in this particular case, he's fine. Really no issues at all flying. No issues whatsoever. Based on the information that he's provided through mm -hmm. his question. Definitely. So guys, it's always a good opportunity right now. I mean, I'm the example. I have to constantly go over airspace over and over again. And if it weren't for Ted's class on our site, I'm not really sure what I would do. Well, I was going to say in talking to Ted, because we get a lot of airspace questions and frankly, we pass them on to Ted because he so graciously answers them. But what he tells me is that, look, people are trying to learn airspace in about three hours of a couple of courses. And he says, it's taken me 20 years, yeah, 30 years to really understand airspace, not to mention some of the changes that, ha that happen in the way that it's communicated and interpreted and some of those issues. So very true. Yeah, it's complicated. It is very complicated. And I don't mean to be the devil's advocate here, but um, Sean Taylor, who will be on the show soon, Night mm -hmm. Fury, famous FPV racer, mm -hmm. used our system and Ted's airspace class to pass the 107 exam with two days of study. Yeah, absolutely. Now, that's, just, so that's, go ahead. Just because you can pass the test doesn't mean you're prepared for the real world. And if you exactly. ask any CFI that question, they will give you the same answer that there's, the, and this, even Ted, when I went to go train for powered parachute, he was like, go pass the test, mm -hmm. get it out of the way. Because what I'm going to teach you about practically flying is a very different. So. <laughs> yeah, and that's true. No matter what the test, no matter what the certification, I'm a CPA, right? So I could, I passed the test. That didn't mean I was ready to go run a CPA firm. Hey, maybe you were. I wasn't. Anyway, <laughs> that's a good lesson to learn. And on that bombshell, that is going to do it for us today. Thank you so much for those reviews. If you found the podcast useful, share it with a friend. And if you haven't taken our airspace class, I guarantee it's one of the best on the internet. And it's definitely worth a look. Check it out and let me know what you think. Thanks, guys. My name's Paul. My name's Rob. This is Ask Drone You. Ask Drone You.